Hello everyone, I am Arglin, your local Durgo Poly engineer, and welcome to episode 2 of the Kinetic Bridge Basics, where I'm going to be teaching you how to make hydraulic bridge designs similar to mine. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to utilize hydraulics in ways that allow you to power multiple different operations at once. So, let's dive into it. So, what is hydraulic compatibility? Well, it means being able to power multiple different devices or operations without requiring multiple power sources. For this section, you'll need to understand the mechanics of parallelogram linkages in which I explained in depth in episode 1. To review briefly, a parallelogram linkage allows you to copy the movement of a beam from one position to another. You can also hook multiple parallelograms with each other. Now, you can extract the power from a parallelogram from multiple areas to produce movement. To convert from a smaller distance to a larger distance, you can connect a beam to a larger beam like this. Remember, when making machines like this, you're not focusing on how to make the hydraulic move farther, rather you want to figure out how to make the output move farther, which in this case is this point on the end of a much longer beam. To convert a larger distance to a smaller distance, you can just flip the input and output signals like so. So, say you're given a case where you require changing the translation of an output to be backwards. The mechanism you can use is the mechanical device, which is your basic lever. It's quite literally a simple machine, but it's a really effective solution to inverting the output. The rotation of a beam to achieve a certain angle requires some basic understandings of geometry and perhaps a little bit of basic trigonometry. For 90 degrees, this is the easiest to understand. Let me create a diagram to first show things off. I have here a maximum grid length hydraulic set to maxima expansion downwards, which you can see highlighted with a blue line. Now what I'm going to do is divide that length in half. Then, if I take two beams and rotate 90 degrees, you'll create a plus sign. Connect the ends and you get a square. And the plus sign is now the diagonals of that square. If we take any of these two sides connecting to the hydraulic and keep one end anchored, you'll see that the end point and start point are exactly the same. And the beam has rotated 90 degrees. What's going on here? Well, it's really simple once you look at it, just a half of it. By having the hydraulic extend, it pushes the beam downwards in an arc. The start of the arc is represented by this beam, and the end of the arc is represented by this beam. I notice because the blue line coming off of the hydraulic meets up with the end point and both the start and end beams are the same length. And if we look at the angle that these two beams together form, it's 90 degrees. This works for many cases when it comes to hydraulics. Though, for the sake of simplicity, it's best to use a hydraulic that is either perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal, and is the maximum size it can be while on grid, aka 4 meters. That way, the beam you're moving is pretty easy to figure out the dimensions of, 
one meter across and one meter high. With the things we've learned in mind, there's one final machine that we'll learn that combines what we already learned in this episode, which is the 108 degree linkage. To visualize how we can create a 180 degree linkage, we gotta first figure out where the start point and end points are. So for us, what we gotta do is make this wooden beam, which is one meter across and one meter high, that are set up to rotate to this final position here, 180 degrees along. Now, I'm going to create another steel beam that is connected to the end of this wooden beam in its end state. So it is in the same height as the starting point, which in this case is 2 meters. I'm then going to rotate the wooden beam backwards from the ending position 90 degrees. As you can see, the metal beam has now translated left. Rotating 90 degrees once more, and the metal beam is now all the way to the left. If we compare the movement of the endpoint for this metal beam from start to finish, it's a 4 meter length movement. If we check our original 90 degree movement, it travels 2. Now, how do we get from 2 meters to 4 meters of movement? Well, remember that we had the ability to convert between a small distance and a large distance. If we make a parallelogram and then append a beam of the same length off the original arm and map their start and end movements, you can see that it now travels double the distance, which is 4 meters. And that's exactly what we need. So, we can just take this mechanism and attach it to the end of the design we made earlier, and as you can see, the wooden beam rotates 180 degrees. Oh, and yes, you can directly connect to the hydraulic if you wish, and it will still work. To summarize what we've done, you can chain parallelograms to power multiple things. You can change the output distance using converter. You can invert movement by using a lever. You can create 90 degree movement using a square that has diagonals the same length as the hydraulic movement and using both the 90 degree movement and the movement converter, you can create a 180 degree linkage. So that concludes episode 2 of the Kinetic Bridge Basics. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, leave a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel. And anywho, I'm your local Durgo Poly Engineer, and have a wonderful day. Cheers.